Hey guys, did you buy one of these motorized dollies only to be disappointed that the remote doesn't work anymore? So the good thing is the dolly still works without the remote. As you can see, it's spinning. But the part that's inconvenient is that you can't pause it. So even though you can still use it, you constantly have to pick it up or, you know, kind of fight with it or try to turn it off as it's moving and it's putting some stress on this motor, obviously. You kind of need the remote because the pause feature is not on here, which I wish they would have made a button somewhere up here for the pause. Like I was excited when I first got it. I was using the remote. I was so happy. And then after about two or three times of using it, this is what happens. Just like that. And just about everybody's having this problem. The remote is just blinking away and that's all it's doing. So I try to put new batteries in there. I try to leave it off for a while, put it back in. It doesn't matter, it's just stuck in there. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try to figure out what's going on with this thing. And maybe we can fix this thing once and for all. And then, you know, we can share it with everybody else where they can fix their remotes and, you know, start using them again. So we're going to find out if we can do something about this. What we're going to do is we're going to take out these two Phillips little screws here from the remote. First one and second one. So this thing should just pop right open. There we go. And here you see the electronics inside. So it looks like the battery connects here and then it sends power to this little module here. And that part looks like some kind of antenna that, you know, transmits the signal to the dolly. All right, as I pulled this thing out, the buttons came out too, so they're just kind of fused together there. Just pop them right back in, so. All right, so here is the control board from the remote. So let's go ahead and see if we can put the battery on here, just like that, holding it. And as you can see, guys, we're still getting that little flash there. All right, so there's one thing I wanna try before I do anything. And let me tell you guys, I'm not an expert in electronics whatsoever. I just like to take things apart and see if I can figure out. Hopefully you can see, but here I have a power supply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our voltage to three volts here. Let's see. But before we do that, let's check how much voltage there is in the battery. 2.87, that's the volts of this battery. This is the battery that came with this remote. And we're going to connect to the board here, to the batteries area. All right, so I'm gonna hit the uh, power here. So it'll flow. And as you can see guys, it lit up and then it, and then it stopped. So now it works again, look at that. Because I think what happened initially is when I pushed this, it had a little burst of power that reset this thing. So what if we put the battery on it back, would it work again? And there you go guys, it's not working. So there's something going on with the way either these batteries are connecting to this thing or what, but it's causing it to do that. And this is the main problem. All right guys, so I found another battery. It's also a lithium battery. Um, the voltage on it, let's check it. The voltage is actually three volts exactly. So it's even higher than this battery that was originally included. And remember guys, I just got this dolly, so this thing's not even a week old. So let's try this new battery that's three volts. So it's got a good voltage. Let's see if it'll do it. No, it's still blinking. Look at that guys. Still blinking. Look at this, I got 2.6 volts. I'll have it even lower than the battery, but I'll connect it here. So let's turn on the power and boom, it resets. Like, no issues whatsoever. No more flashing, no more funny stuff. This doesn't make any sense, guys. So now it's back to normal. It's actually working again. Okay, my dolly's riding around. <laughs> Forgot to turn it off. So it works. The remote actually works, guys. So don't throw away your remote. It's not junk. It's just something that has to do with the power delivery to the remote. All right, guys, so after playing around with it for a little bit, I came up with something, and as you can see, it's already soldered on there. So basically, I tried a few things. Um, there was a little tiny capacitor in here instead of this other one that I just put on here, and I took that off and nothing changed. So the funny part is, is every time I put the power supply on, it would work, and every time I put the battery, it would not. So that gave me an idea. I, I thought, 
why not if I add a larger capacitance to the line here what's happening is is something is resonating back and forth and and it's keeping it in a loop that's why it's not working so adding something like a capacitance that was larger might throw the loop off or the vibrations off and sure enough that's exactly what happened because my theory is this thing probably has huge capacitors in there and so whenever this connects it automatically just works but you know battery being only the battery it's it's ringing the signal is ringing back and forth through the battery but now that the capacitor is in here it it kills that ringing that's going on between the circuits in here and it's making it work so let me show you guys up close here so basically what I did is I found this capacitor so um, this is a 100 UF Let's see if I can show you 50 volts so it's kind of a large capacitor this is all I could find what I had um, if you have something small like because you don't need 50 volts you only need you know 5 volt or something so if you can find like a capacitor that's you know around 100 UF maybe smaller UFs would work too so technically this capacitor doesn't have to be this big it could be like a really tiny capacitor that would still fit in the case and let me demonstrate so I'll grab a battery here I'll connect it to the back and you'll be able to see that this will blink and then it'll stop as you saw right there do it again it blinks and it stops so it's, it tries to go in that loopy but then it cuts it off and now it works as normal see if I can see as I'm clicking it's reacting to the click as normal so it's not going into that vicious cycle of killing and that that's actually what kills the battery whenever it's in that vicious blinking cycle so this actually fixes it the remote works as normal so that's this battery here that's working and this older battery that was very low is also working as you can see so my plan is at least for myself here is since this goes into here and obviously this ain't gonna fit this is not gonna bother me too much but what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole right here right where this capacitor can go through the case so it'll just kind of poke out all right guys so here is the finished product um, I've kind of butchered it a little bit and made the hole too big but that is okay because we are going to be using something pretty cool to uh, solidify this thing to the case um, but yeah as you can see it kind of sticks out quite a bit so this is probably not a good option for most people so thankfully it's over here where the speed is i'm not going to use that button too much anyways let me put it in here while you guys can see so the cover's on back to normal so i got actually this guy's on right now button here and there it goes it starts moving so it works guys so the remote is back in action anyways guys this doesn't have to be like this honestly i'm sure there's capacitors small enough i mean even if you did have to drill a hole this should be half of this or even less honestly you know maybe a little tiny nub should be sticking out so but in any case this proves that you can fix it and you can have a remote you know but you do have to add a capacitor to your battery so anyways this is the way i fix mine and this gives you an idea so all you got to do is parallel a capacitor to the battery and that's it i mean that fixes it guys and i'm using this really weak battery that was 2.8 so that's pretty dead so i'm sure it'll work till till it completely dies so and it's not going to run it down because as long as this thing's not blinking that's what really runs it down all right guys and that's what i came up with so it doesn't look the best but it'll definitely hold it pretty good and it'll keep the capacitor from moving around so so yeah i'm pretty happy that i got the remote fixed because now i can finally use it again but the whole point of this video is to show that you know this remote is fixable and you can get it to work again i hope guys this video was helpful to you and if you liked it hit that like button and also guys check out the uh, review on this dolly that i did and if you want to see more of my videos here on this channel so if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace